Hi everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. This is FC with CappersDirect.com here to give you guys your first look preview at Bellator 290. Going head to head with the UFC. Bellator is coming out on Saturday, February 4th, not Friday. On Saturday, February 4th, to bring you this offering, Bellator 290. We got two title fights on the line. We're going to talk about both of them in this preview since we're going to go over the main card. We're going to go over Bedar versus Emilianenko first. That's going to be your main event. Let's go over the main event now. Okay, so your main event for Bellator 290 is going to be Ryan Bedar versus the GOAT, Bedar Emilianenko. Well, a lot of people consider him the GOAT. Let's look at the Ryan Bader side. Ryan Bader is 39 years old. He's 30 and 7. He's one of the longest reigning heavyweight champions Bellator's ever had. He's what Bellator sees as the standard, right? We know that Bader is sort of a UFC reject. UFC probably shouldn't have let him go. He probably still had a lot more in him, but he he went off and went off to Bellator to do his thing and obviously getting the heavyweight crown and winning a lot of money probably the right move but this is a rematch guys we saw this fight three years ago in the same state in the same arena we know that ryan bader is a wrestler but what happened he came out and and hit him with his signature overhand left hook that's what he calls it now it, it's a it's something that he it's always been a little shot of ryan bader's it's, he's always worked on it it's, it's when you come over the top and you come with your lead hand. Normally, a, a jab would come straight. He comes, he loops it around, so it's more of a hook. When he hit Fedor with it, guys, Fedor went out. Fedor doesn't have a chin. Fedor is. Let's look at the Fedor side, okay? Fedor is forty-six years old. That is, that's in MMA years. That's old, not in life, but in MMA years, that's really old. The guy is still forty and six. That's why many people consider him the goat. He was unbeatable for the longest time, and then. Father time caught up and that chin, it just went. And so in that first fight, Ryan Bader comes over with that left hook that he calls a left hook and Fedor goes out. So why is this matchup even happening? Fedor sort of semi-retired. Um, we saw he came out and beat Tim Johnson. We we actually, we, we, beat, we bet Fedor in that. We bet the under and thank God it worked out. But here looking at this matchup, Fedor is the one who asked for this fight. Bellator wasn't even looking to fight Fedor at all. And Fedor went to Scott Coker. He had a meeting uh, and, and said, look, I want this fight back. This is the fight that I, I should have won this fight. This should never, I should have never lost it. And when you watch that fight, you see that Ryan Bedor gets to Fedor before Fedor is able to land any shots on Ryan Bedor. Don't, don't get me wrong, Ryan Bedor, his chin isn't the best either. The guy wobbles and shakes every time. Both these guys are older people. The difference in this fight is in speaking with Fedor is Fedor saying, look, I let him beat me to the punch with that overhand hook shot, whatever. I let him beat me to the punch. I'm not going to do that this time. If I hit first, I win. Look at Tim Johnson where, you know, they, they're trading some shots, but the majority, the hefty ones, right? Fedor has the longer reach normally. He's a heavyweight. Even though he's like six foot, he's got these gorilla arms, right? And so he, he man, he swings and power, he still has the power. He will knock out Ryan Bader if Ryan Bader just slips up a little bit. The X factor here is that three years ago, Ryan Bader knocked him out. Ryan Bader didn't have to knock him out. Ryan Bader could have shot in on Fedor right away, taken him down and just tried to maul him. That is a grueling style. It's something that this fight is what catapulted Ryan Bader to be able to strike more. And he was able, he, he you look at him now, he, oh, he always looking to land that shot. That same like overhand hook thing that he, he's called it his signature. He's always trying to land it in like every fight ever since then. Right. And so it, the question is, is Fedor going to come out here? He's going to, he's not going to let Ryan Bader try to get that shot off or take him down. He's going to go in there. He's going to try to swing big. Fedor always swings with his hands at his sides. He, he's Many people consider him the GOAT because he was able to swing from the hip and just knock fools out. And no one could beat him. I mean, at the, I, there was a, such a long stint where Fedor was just the man. And times have changed. But it's not like he has a brand new champion coming up here with a solid chin and, and, and just power for days. He's got Ryan Bader. 
probably he probably Ryan Bader probably has a better chin than Fedor, but I mean, come on, guys, how much? I mean, how much better can it be? The guy, the guy wobbles like every time. So <laughs> Ryan Bader, I mean, he's a champion. He's coming in here. He's coming in here to get some money, but Fedor is coming in here to try to right the ship. To prove to everybody and himself, really, that the first fight was a fluke. That Ryan Bader should have never been in the same ring with him. We're talking about a quote-unquote UFC reject versus the GOAT, right? Fedor can't, in his mind, he can't equate that. In his mind, it doesn't make sense. In his mind, he's still, to this day, this fight haunts him. This is what he wanted. This is what he got. This is going to make it a big event, guys. Bellator 290, you guys are going to tune in for every bet. We're going to have probably multiple bets on each fight, but I'm excited for this card. But let's get into that co-main event. Another title fight. Let's do it. Now your Bellator co-main event is coming at you from the middleweight division for the middleweight championship. We have Johnny Eblen versus Anatoly Tokov. Let's look at Johnny first. Johnny's 12-0. and 0. I mean, you're looking at that and you're like, okay, inexperience right he's the champion because he beat someone that was 49 and 7 gay guard musasi the kid is uh 31 he's 6-1 by 74 inch reach he has really good striking but it's developing his whole game is developing if you had to characterize johnny eblin he is a good wrestler who is developing all rounds of mma right trying to develop a well-rounded mma game um the good thing that looking at that fight with Gegard Musasi, because that's the most experienced person that he he has fought um, before. Then he bought he beat John Salter in a decision, which was a dominant dominant win. But Gegard Musasi is the highest caliber opponent that he's fought, and he made it look easy. The issue here is that everyone saw that fight and it's like, oh sh- shoot, Johnny Eblen is the real deal at twelve and zero. No one saw this coming, right? No one. No one saw this coming. It's like he shouldn't have beat Gegard. Gegard should have been all over him. But there was a certain technique in that fight that American top team saw. And Johnny went for it. And he exploited it. And it was a certain hit. that It was a certain shot that it couldn't miss. Gegard was wobbling. Gegard was behind the pace of that fight. He could not catch up. No matter what he did, because every time he would start to come on, boom, that shot would come out. And it was like, oh, snap again. Right. So that that does kind of it doesn't take away from that win. But you have to wonder, maybe there's some fighters out there that just have other fighters numbers. Right. Is Johnny Eblen that guy that just has gay guards number? Maybe with that shot that Gegard just, man, he couldn't defend it no matter what. I mean, and Johnny Eblen has a great jab on top of it. It just, it doesn't miss normally. He's been working on it. Additionally, he's the one who got Grant Dawson, who's in the UFC, who just beat Marco Madsen in a short notice fight by wrestling the Olympic Greco-Roman wrestler who I've seen in the gym hardly get taken down. That guy, Grant Dawson, who took him down, no problems, right? Training with Johnny Eblen. Johnny Eblen's like, hey, leave Glory MMA. Come to American Top Team. Come get some work. We got some work for you. Come get it, right? I mean, we've seen we, we've seen what Grand Dawson can do. And then you have Anatoly Tokov, who is the disciple and pupil of Fedor Emelianenko, the GOAT, the guy who's in this main event, right? This guy is 31 and 3, experienced for days. He's 32, not that old. 5'10", a little bit shorter. He's going to have a 73-inch reach, right? So, I mean, the reach is going to be close. Um, He's a fighter that likes to hit with big bombs, but really, in the end, he's a fighter that's going to be looking for the takedown. What's interesting here is that Johnny Eblen, if I had to guess who's the better wrestler, Johnny Eblen is probably the best freestyle American wrestler out of these two. When it comes down to it, Johnny Eblen can probably take Tokov down. Tokov's been taken down, and I've seen him taken down. But I've also seen Johnny Eblen taken down, and knowing that Tokov wants to go in for a takedown after he he tests the stand-up a little bit, I mean, that's nerve-wracking. In the end, guys, right now, as it stands, okay, I am slightly, slightly favoring Johnny Eblen. Slightly. That all could change by, by Friday when the write-up comes up. 
because if Johnny Eblen has a game plan and and has seen something in Tokov's game that he can exploit, I want to know about it. One, two, Johnny Eblen here is because he's less experienced, he's taken less damage, but he's also he hasn't seen everything. So somebody can come out and show him something and and, and next thing you know, Johnny Evelyn's going to lose, right? Show him something new, something he's never seen before. Now, he's in a room of killers, so he tries to minimize that by having all those killers train with him, right? In the end, man, I slightly favor Johnny Evelyn only because, only because right now he's riding a wave of momentum. This whole Grand Dawson acquisition and, and working with Johnny Evelyn, man, that is a game changer in my opinion grant dawson really did show me something in the last fight and so johnny evelyn as long as i can see that johnny evelyn knows that tokoff is probably going to go for a takedown and so he's doing things in order to secure his takedown defense and reverses i think he's got a real shot to take this and, and continue on but man he's going up against the goat's pupil the person who's traveling with the goat the person who trains with the goat the person who's seen everything in the gym as well and and also has seen a lot of things outside the gym really good if if tokov can get eblin down i mean there might be some ground and pound finishes off of that so it's gonna be an amazing fight man this could be a main event of any card uh this bellator card was supposed to be even bigger um another another fight fell off another title fight fell off um yeah, Vadim Nemkov versus Yoel Romero. Vadim Nemkov had to pull out. So yeah, it was gonna be it was gonna be like Team Fedor coming over here and doing the dang thing. But obviously we missed one. One dropped off, but we still have this amazing one. And I, they're bringing over Team Fedor. This is gonna be hype. This is gonna be fun. I see Johnny Evelyn sort of edging this out currently based off the information I have. But on Friday I'm gonna have all new information. So on Friday I'm gonna let you guys know. You're gonna want that write up. You're going to want you're going to want to see exactly how this is going to match up. And like I've told you, we're going to have multiple bets on each fight. So this big event, Bellator is going to be banging. Let's get into your next fight. Now, your next fight is coming at you from the welterweight division. One hundred and seventy pounds. We have Sabah Hamasi versus Brennan Ward. Let's look at the Sabah Hamasi side. Sabah Hamasi is a banger. The guy is 17 and 10. We bet on him as an underdog, huge underdog. I think like plus 200 cash and no problem. Um, he's called the Sleek Sheik, right? This is his own nickname. He's a banger, swings bombs. And in this fight, he's looking to do that again. I do worry about his gas tank. I do wonder if he's going to be able to hold up to the damage because I've seen him get hit and rocked and hurt, dropped, knocked out. But he's one of these guys that's going to come out and try to put you out. He's going to try to put you out and it's going to be up to you to put him out. And he's very confident, doesn't care, trains really hard, gets hit really hard in the gym. But for some odd reason in these fights, I watch him get hit and he just crumbles, right? Now we have Brendan Ward. Man, it's hard to talk about Brendan Ward because the guy was a superstar for a long time. Um, he was a big name. And then he took five years off, a five-year layoff. He came back, though, and rattled off some victories. But even those victories weren't necessarily like back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, right? He's, he's coming off of a little bit of a layoff himself of like seven months. So, I mean, in this fight, the, the interesting thing is that Brendan Ward can go for takedowns. He can grapple. Normally, he likes to come out and swing big and bang. Now, I know a lot of people are like, hey, this is going to be two bangers, two muscle-bound bangers just coming out there, seeing who hits first, right? Uh, looking at the Brendan Ward camp, they may be looking for takedowns. They may implement some of those things in. It all depends if who gets hit first, and maybe Brendan Ward hits uh, Hamasi first, and Hamasi's out. Hamasi could reach out. Hit Brendan Ward and it be a day called over. It's over, right? The way I see this, man, I think Brendan Ward has a shot, especially with his game plan this week. I'm going to definitely find out if this is uh, if this game plan is warranted. If it's if it's if he's going to stick to it. What's he thinking? I like to also see the psyche of both guys. I know Sabah Hamasi is extraordinarily confident. The guy's rooting on 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 cocky, right? He's he's right there on the line. He toes the line really well. And Brendan Ward, we know, is is. Not necessarily a head case, he, he, but he can worry a little bit. The anxiety can get to him a little bit, and so um, I, I do need to check on that. But as of right now, I do think Brendan Ward has a path of victory with the grappling, and I do think Brendan Ward can touch Hamasi first. But 
it's weird, man. I love betting Sabah Hamasi when Sabah Hamasi's like maybe like a slight favorite, like minus one ten. I like betting him when he's a huge underdog because when you're looking at these huge underdogs, what they may not have a chin, but they got a puncher's chance, and they might be going up against someone who does not have a chin, right? In this matchup, it's a little bit different. Brennan Ward, they were kind of babying him when he came back. They were trying to kind of jump it, get him a layup couple, and then the last fight is a little bit of a step up, and then this one, it's like a little bit more of a step up because while Sabah Hamasi is good and has power, Sabah Hamasi can be beat. Sabah Hamasi can be touched up on the feet, he can be hit, and he can be taken down. And so Brennan Ward can either make this super easy by going for the takedowns and hoping that his gas tank is there, or he can be make this grueling and see who hits who first and who goes down first but i think it's gonna be a banger of a card man again we had four fights on this main card but one of them got kicked off a really big one got kicked off so right now we got three fights on this main card and this is gonna be your bellator 290 main card preview now if you like this kind of content be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that post notification so you get notified every single time we put out a video. Either a free play in the NFL, a free play for a Super Bowl, a free play for who knows what, NBA, college basketball is coming up. We're going to have free play, so make sure you hit that notification button. And comment down below, Belly. Belly for Bellator. That's the code name that we have in the office every single time. People like, hey, we, hey, Belly? It's that cash cow. That's how people see it around here for some odd reason. They look forward to it. They can't wait for a Bellator and UFC to be together because for them, that's like Super Bowl, right? UFC and Bellator together, that's a huge night of winning for us. I'm telling you guys, Saturday, February 4th, UFC Bellator. This was the Bellator preview. Go see the UFC preview and make sure to pick up both cards on Friday when they come out because Saturday, February 4th. It's going to be a great day to win. Let's get it.